Episode 3 of Am I Actually the Strongest, the episode where you find out just how utterly insane this anime really is. Now, episode 3 of Am I Actually the Strongest ended up in an area I did not at all expect. Now, in the first episode, I thought it was a decent fun mix of isekai, sort of etchy humor, and more serious elements, with a promising, interesting concept and story. The second episode, it's like, okay, we're going more into the dark side, he's clearly just committing war crimes here, casually, and we definitely see this darker aspect to him, and this personality trait that he has in this area, and it's going more in a serious direction, right? And then the third episode comes, and oh boy, oh boy, we end up with the most goofy-ass episode I have seen in a long time, even for Isekai standards, where this show just went from, like, dark to insanely goofy, with, like, no semblance of seriousness at all, except for maybe a tiny bit at the end, where we get some actual plot development, even though, like, almost all the episode was just filler with goofy content that probably is going to have no impact on the actual story for the rest of the season. First of all, I would like to say that I still, for some reason, feel that the animation quality is lower than it was in episode 1. I felt the same in episode 2. I might just be crazy, keep that in mind, but I do still feel for some reason that the animation quality is not as clean as it was in that first episode, but again, if I'm wrong, feel free to say so. So in this third episode, Haruto and Char basically have a lot of brother-sister brittle relationship building and goofiness together for most of the episode. The MC here pulls one of the most goofy-ass, crazy stunts I've seen in Isaka in a long time, where he ends up wanting to watch anime, and Char, his sister, also ends up watching anime, or wants to watch anime, so he casually just connects to the internet in his old world, and logs into his Netflix account in his old world to watch anime, or show anime to Char. And he even has the audacity to say, I'm not even gonna gloss, I'm gonna gloss over all the details, I'm not even going to explain how in the world, how on God's green earth, I did this. He's just going to casually do it, and not, not explain. Now, some of you might say, now that is a Giga Chad move, if I may say so myself. But to me, where I am always very interested to have the world explained to me, and know the logic of the world, I'm just like, how, what the, excuse me? You're not even gonna explain this insanely goofy over the top thing? I mean, not even like a stupid explanation, just nothing? Just gotta drop the mic and walk away? So to me, I was just like, what the fuck dude, that is a big negative for me. But after I watched episode 3, I sort of slammed myself to thinking like, okay, fine, this show is going to be insanely goofy and just humoristic and over the top and insane. And I'm not gonna need to take any of this seriously, so fine, I don't need to care about the explanation of how you made this work. Which is a, which is just, it's a shame, really, as earlier in episode 1, and even episode 2, I thought that this could be an interesting anime in terms of the plot and the storyline and where they go with it, considering the starting concept of him being thrown out and all like that. But I can't take any of the story seriously anymore, as he they don't explain things. And to me, that's just like a, I can't get engaged. I can't think about these things logically if I have no logical framework to work from. That's not to say I don't like these sort of anime. Like, I can enjoy this goofy, over-the-top, insane anime isekai all the time. For example, Misfit of the Demon King Academy. Like, that is the king of just doing things, no matter how obscenely insane they are, and not explaining anything. Like, Anos Voldegode is probably the prime example of this done in a fashion I think is correct. This, however, I don't know. Like, I did not expect the anime to go this route at all. And I'm very conflicted on what I actually feel on it after this third episode. So, anyway, Char watches watch anime, and she gets addicted to anime. Basically, her brother makes her an otaku, so God forgive him. And she ends up watching a lot of Power Rangers anime, or something along those lines, and ends up convincing Haruto, or Haruto? Yes. Okay, yeah. To basically dress up as a superhero, the hero of justice, as she calls him. Basically like a black Power Ranger, the black knight he becomes named, so basically a dollar store Batman, and he goes out and fights crime. Yep, you heard that right. He dresses up or puts himself in like a barrier Power Ranger suit or dollar store Batman suit and goes around beating up thieves and cleaning up his hometown. Well, I mean, okay, I didn't expect Batman in, in the anime here, but okay, I'm sold. But yeah, like, as I said, this third episode was goofy as hell. I can appreciate the very adorable brother-sister relationship though, 
that was definitely more of a highlight for me in this episode. Most anime go more the weird, etchy, perverted route with that often. But this was just more sweet. And uh, yeah, it, it's cute. It's cute. I like it. Oh yeah, of course. Char as well. She learns Japanese in like two days. Because apparently she is a genius of some sort. She's, she's like the Einstein of this world. Well, not anymore because she's addicted to anime and it's an otaku. And her brain will soon rot, I'm sure. Just like all hours, right? Uh, aware. But yeah. So that basically ends most of the episode. We do thankfully get some plot development at the very end here, where the prince and princess come from the capital. The prince being just the extremely stereotypical douchebag. It's like, yes, I know, I want to punch him in the face. Yep, I, I know this character type. Yes, sir. And Haruto basically gets dropped into a duel with him because apparently the prince knows or they know that he is like a level two adopted from an orphanage. The question is how they get to know this, but I guess we'll see. So and anyway, they end up in a duel, and basically Haruto lets himself get beaten up with a, with barriers around him, though, so he doesn't feel anything, pretending he's being hurt and disciplined. But then the prince says that he can fight back, and he Haruto's, Haruto's like, okay, I, oh really, I can? He instantly turns it around, beats the prince's ass, and when the prince then just starts shooting fireballs, just absorbs them, and then basically just shows them all off, releasing them, all at once, uh, to show the prince just how, you know, powerful and superior he is. This, of course, gets the princess to ask uh, the the father of Haruto there, or adopted father, it's like, is he really level 2? Because the magic he's using is advanced, and there's no way that's that, that's a thing, right? That shouldn't be a thing. And the father's just like, hey, you know what? He said he's level 2. I don't know. I just I just go with it. It's like, okay, I guess so, Giga Chad. But that brings me to another massive massive annoyance for me in, in this episode. I was in the starting stages here, in the episode 1, very very interested to see what they might do with this barrier magic, having limited him to this magic and not giving him any elements. Being like, okay, finally, an Isekai protagonist where he is limited in some regard, where he might have to use ingenuity or some other just, you know, intellect to overcome challenges or use his magic in creative ways. But as we see, with the barrier thing where he absorbs the fireballs and then later just uh, pushes them back out. That, in my opinion, just invalidates the entire concept of him being limited because he can basically now use fire or any other element as long as he absorbs it first. Which is like, what? But that to me, just again, invalidates the concept of him being limited to this barrier magic, being limited to this non-element magic and having to work around with that. So it seems to me, at least, that they will go the route of the barrier magic just being a give-it-all gimmick where it doesn't really matter. It's going to still be able to do anything it wants to do and use any elements he wants to use effectively. And in the end, again, just make it a complete gimmick where it won't really matter. And that is just, again, such a waste. Like, the concept and the setup here, I think, has a ton of potential. But they're wasting it, just making it a gimmick, seemingly. It isn't guaranteed, I suppose, but just him being able to do that ruins a lot of the potential for me in that regard. And again, that brings me back to the point of me not being able to take this anime seriously anymore. It's not to say it can't be entertaining. It's not to say I think it's bad, per se. But it definitely makes me realize that, okay, after episode 2, I thought this might be more of a darker, serious-esque story. But no, this is definitely going to be very over-the-top, way over-the-top goofy and funny. I mean, I, I mean, I did smirk some. Not really my humor all the time, I suppose, but yeah, it's funny enough. But yeah, it definitely went from being a, okay, I'm interested, I want to know about the world, I want to decipher these things and analyze these things, to being like, okay, they're not going to explain things, they're just going to basically make the concept way less appealing to me. Okay, I'm going to just sit back, not really engage my brain too much, and just enjoy the show for the goofy uh, insanity it is. So that's how I'm going to be approaching the show moving forward, and that's basically that. I'm slightly interested, though, in... As the next episode preview, it seems we are going back to geopolitics and power struggles in the kingdom and maybe some altercations brewing with the royal family. That would be very interesting, or at least fun. So, I guess we'll see what happens in episode 4. Well, the rest of the season, as stated, I will basically just be tra uh, treating this as a very goofy, chill, non-brain engaged show. It will probably be very similar to My Unique Skill Makes Me OP Unit Level 1, where we're there as well. The concept is just broken, doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that is how it is. I do hope that they spend more time on the story moving forward and don't just have 
episodes that are borderline filler for almost the entire episode, or at least just goofy humor the entire episode. I do like a mix, or at least if you're going to go goofy, go more in the Misfit of Demon Lord Academy goofy, or Demon King Academy. Anyways, what did you think of the episode? Did you like it? Not like it? Are you liking the show more now since it started airing, or less? Why? If you have any thoughts or questions, also feel free to leave them below in the comment section. I will read and respond to them to the best of my ability. Also, if you liked the video here, do please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all that good stuff to support my new channel here. Thank you, thank you. That being said, I will see you all in the next Isekai or other anime video. So have a good day. Bye-bye.